Hi, I'm Zed, and Hi. this is Emma Rios Hi. and Hui Lin, two of the invited guests at SDGCC 2016. Hi guys, um, you know, tell me a little bit, or tell us a little bit about yourselves and a bit about your work. Now, both of you are comic creators, hmm. yeah? Yeah. Comic creators, uh, writers, as well as artists. Yeah. Um, what's that like? Um, how do you begin? How did, how did the journey start? Uh, maybe individually first. Okay. So I think, um, actually, we were talking about, we, about it a bit before. That we, we, the, you need a bit of luck to get into the business. It's not easy. I, um, I, w I was able to start in comics thanks to internet, but in a um, not very direct way, because in my case, like my, I had some work on the internet and my blog, um, Flickr and you know, social network stuff. Um, suddenly I made contact to, to Warren Ellis when he was very active in the internet, like in, in 2006 or something. And he, he made a post about my stuff. Uh, on his website, so I started from having like 20 visitors per day to having like 3,000 or something. <laughs> and a month later, I had a proposal from a very, very small American publisher, and now became bigger, but it was Boomer Studios who was starting at the moment. Um, so that was my way to enter. And before finishing my, my gig on um, Boom Studios, I had an offer from Marvel because what I did there, Hex had a very good criticism and all that. So it was like, it was like a matter of luck, a matter of having your work done, and a matter of making contact. It's not very easy. Hey, what is what about you? Uh, it it was a very slow and gradual process. Like, like I, I, we were just talking about it, like, uh, coming back from work and then just you know drawing what drawing what I want drawing what I wanted drawing my comics and um, they they will look really bad at first so if you're just starting out it, your work will look really bad but if you keep at it it'll get better and as you post your work uh, online because we it's very easy to do that now um, you will you know somebody will really like it and contact you hmm. about it and that, that's in a nutshell kind of what happened yeah and you meet people and. And find opportunities, yeah. But if, yeah, if you if you never if you never draw and you never post your work and you never go to cons, then you'll have like no chance of anyone. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, well, you see, the two of you come from very different parts of the world. Yeah. Uh, I would say, yeah? yeah. So Emma comes from Spain and Huilin comes from Malaysia. Um, what's it like uh, breaking in to the industry from these? You know, two very different. You know, you've got Europe, you've got a part of Asia. Um, what, what, what's the differences? What, what's it like? Or what, what was it like in Spain first? Yeah. Well, um, I think it's very difficult everywhere in general because I think that actually the way of breaking into comics, um, for example, as an artist, that this was the um, the way I choose for for becoming a professional. Like I've been doing like small press since I since I was 16 years old, but I wasn't able to enter until I was 30. Um, and only being an artist, I used to be a writer and an artist. So it's like in Spain, there is a very small scene. It's very rich, and there are very good creators there, and it's amazing. But the people doesn't people don't read enough comics to to allow a market a proper market that allowed a comic artist to live only from comics. So everybody has. Uh, a, day, a day job and all that. So in my case, yeah, it was a matter of luck. Um, I used to go to conventions there, a couple of con big conventions in Spain. Uh, the one in Barcelona, they invite editors like from Marvel or DC, France, uh, from Soleil or people like, like that, that revise portfolios. So I, I went once and I had a really very good feedback. But So I started working on proofs for Vertigo and for Marvel. But even if the feedback was amazing and they wanted to work with me, you still need to find a proper project, a proper writer or something that, you know, works. Because even if they like your work, it's not that easy to enter. So once you get the work, I, I, I made it because I did it through a very independent editors. Um, and then, well, a person who was involved in that, in that 
in that publishers were Mark Wade, who was the one who asked me for me for working on Doctor Strange at Marvel. Right. So it's like, yeah, it's coincidence, chance, but it's the same story for everyone. You need to know somebody that is going to help you in or that likes your work or something like that. And you have to be ready, you have to have a lot of work behind you, you know, to to make you happen. So, yeah, and also even if you get in, it's very difficult to, you know, to stay. Right. Like especially if you enter in a big company like Marvel or DC, they normally start giving you like short stories or feelings, and um, maybe you just disappear just after because the editor you were working to with uh, get had a label off or you know things like that. Mm. You don't know. But if you manage to fulfill your your deadlines and if you you know you you are not problematic and you are nice and you have a good work, it's not, this is teamwork. It's like your ego has to be like a bit controlled. You know, it's not even if you are an artist, you have to control yourself and to know that there's a lot of people involved and that. So yeah, it's like a lot of factors. But yeah, I think it's difficult in Spain from everywhere. Okay. So. What about um, what was it like uh, starting off in Malaysia? <laughs> what, what do you think the scene was like? Was it a very um, uh, open scene? Uh, was it easy to break through? Um, I think that quite hard for me to talk about the comic scene in Malaysia because I published, uh, well, Mirror is published with, with Image and uh, we kind of got that done through, uh, well, through Emma <laughs> and, um, and Brandon, Brandon Graham. Um, but I mean, there, there's definitely like a huge comic scene in Malaysia. There's, um, and in different languages as well, which just makes it even, but which I think makes it a bit harder, but I guess you just have to pick what language you feel the most comfortable in, right? Like Chinese, um, uh, comics there in Chinese, English, uh, Malay, right? So if you think about it, there's actually quite quite a lot of different things that you could do. And um, recently now, I think also there are a lot more publishers that you could go to. Yeah, yeah, so it's... Yeah. <laughs> All right, and now uh, okay, a question that I've been meaning to ask, and you know, it's a, it's a topic that's been talked about quite a bit. Uh, you talk about women in comics in many different yeah. uh, different aspects. Uh, you talk about how they're portrayed in comics, you talk about the women that work on comics and within the industry. Um, now, tell me, how how was it for you, yeah. you know, trying to break in as a woman? Because we, we all know, I think it's a, it's a very common place that mm. all the comic artists and writers I grew up with, um, we're guys. Yeah. We're guys, right? I think it's, it's, it's the same for most of us. Um, what was it like trying to break into the industry as a woman? Do you think that you know it was okay, or was it a bit more challenging? It was a bit tiresome to hear that you are different all the time, that you are like something special, that you are cool for being a girl in comics, or that you are because what it this all this stuff what makes you feel that you don't belong there. So um, I felt a huge change in the last four years or so. Um, I work in, I started working in comics professionally in, in 2009, 2008. Yeah, when we yeah. went to Lingua Comica, just after Lingua Comica. Um, and I remember before that I used to do a lot of small press and I, I belonged to a self-publishing association in Spain there were, were 12 guys and I, you know, and me. So I was the only girl there. Uh, and it is the smallest thing, like the small press now in my area and in Spain there are a lot of women now. Like uh, almost like the contrary as it was. I like, was the girl all the time, the only one. Uh, and then it changed. And, uh, and in the big market like Marvel and DC, I remember like it was very tough, for example, to launch Captain Marvel at the moment, or or to launch like series with a female lead character. And now everything has changed. Now Thor is a woman. Now Iron Man is a woman. Now uh, Black Panther is a woman. Is a woman. And then suddenly uh, the the um, the comic readers that were women uh, moved from non-existent to the main target for you know making profit so that was quite fascinating to see on one hand it's like this is this like 
marketing of feminism makes you feel that there's no safe zone anymore. Right. <laughs> but on the other, it's cool that uh, a small girl can go to a mall and buy a helmet of Thor instead of a Barbie or I don't know, yeah. things like that. So there will be, I think that there will be a moment in which this will become normal. But do you think that right now we are at a point, we're at a point where the industry is overcompensating a little bit? Yeah, but even if it's overcompensating a little bit, I think it's worth it because of that many years of being like denied. Yeah. So, you know, I think representation is important. Um, I belong to a collective of female authors in Spain and we work very hard to bring all names of all women that were working in animation and all comics in Spain like in the 30s or so uh, to bring those names up because they were totally hidden by the industry back then so I think it's important to to show that the women comics exist and that you know they are doing a lot of cool stuff and that there are a lot of female readers who are supporting comics and, and all that. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I think there are quite a lot of female uh, comic artists. Um, I mean, in, in Japan, uh, in ja definitely in Japan, like um, Hiromu Akawa, who did Full Metal Alchemist, is like incredible, right? Um, uh, Sailor Moon is incredible. But the thing is, right? Um, I think there's still a lot of like stigma attached to like girly comic comics drawn by women, right? Like I think a lot of guys would be like, oh, I, ew, I don't want to read this because it, it looks like it was drawn by a girl, right? And I'm like, it might be a really good story like I used to be like that right but I kind of figured out that it, it's a good story right and I think that is actually the big problem that um, that that anything vaguely girly or, or feminine it looks like it was drawn by a woman and this, this kind of like pervades everything actually right so it it, it it is a big problem but it will take a long time to fix that and um, the reason that I guess that uh, it, it is good that that the, the industry seems to be trying to appeal to more female readers because uh, women actually spend a lot of money on stuff. Yeah. yeah so it's really good for the industry if you can get more women to read stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry. I think. And I'm and now uh, the two of you have embarked on a brand new project. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. A, a new project with Image. Yeah. It's creator own. It's uh, Mirror the Mountain. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit more about this. Um, I, I was reading the synopsis and it got me kind of excited. You know, it's about I read majors and technologies, and you know. So tell me a little bit about. Uh, tell us a little bit about it. Um, you know. Okay, I think you explain it better. Really? <laughs> yeah, one just okay. Uh, okay, I'll try to keep this like short because I, I will go on forever. <laughs> it's basically a, like a. This we love science fiction and. Um, uh, we really like, like I guess, like animals and like like magic and planets as well. So it's it's kind of like a science fiction story about um, about like the this attempt to to make like sentient animals, like to make you know like an animal that thinks and feels like a person, right? And um, and I guess about all the good and the bad things that could arise from that. And then it kind of got away from us, and it became about like this, space opera. yeah, space opera with like uh, like his like some some like po the political vendetta in the past, yeah. But but I mean, if you yeah, but it's still fundamentally about uh, intelligent animals. Like, are they human? Right? Do they do they feel like they want to be human? What do the humans think about that? Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Anyone add? Yeah. No. It's like, it's great. Like it's, she summarized it very well because uh, I just like start like you know go from here and there and there and it's like very very messy but yeah I think that what we are doing mostly is like creating a world and very wide one actually because we start in a very small location that is uh, that is uh, it's where it's set the first arc it's an asteroid and a very little colony but there's a lot of stuff behind to build the characters and to build everything so now in the second arc we're moving to the to that place and we are building it as as if we're doing some kind of huge role play campaign or you know you are considering every detail like how the politics are or how uh, I don't know how they move like with magic like through borders or teleport or whatever like think about everything at, at, at quite a deep level so we are very excited about it and yeah it's, the feeling is like this, this 
could be, you know, forever and we could do stories there like whenever we want, you know, to build something solid. Great, and uh, when is it out? Uh, is it really out? Saturday? <coughs> yeah, on Saturday we are doing an exclusive launch of Mirror here and then it will hit the stores uh, on 14. Uh, 14 of September in the US and everywhere. So uh, this was Emma Rios and Hui Lin. And if you're at SDGCC uh, this weekend, be sure to check out their book, um, Mirror the Mountain, yeah. when it's launched. Okay. Thank you.